big changes are happening right now with real estate photography and editing. For instance, I was able to take this picture with all these cars lined up outside and in just a few seconds, they're gone. Completely removed, easy enough to do. Let's take a look at that again. It's worth repeating, all these cars completely removed. Now, not everything is perfect. There are some imperfections. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more going on, not just with everything that you've been seeing, people talking about this new generative fill coming in Photoshop and all that. There are companies coming online that are trying to get into this game as well that are going to keep changing what we're doing going forward, but it's not just to help. In some cases, this could be a hindrance. So I wanna dive into that right now in this episode. First, not everything is perfect. We can see that here, because these cars were blocking this uh, lamp post here, the light post, if we go to the finished image, we can see that it didn't finish filling that in and it put some type of, looks like particle board or some type of plywood over here in front of a building that would be across the street. Still very close, but this is just outside. There's also big stuff that's happening inside when it comes to virtual staging. Take this empty room, for instance. So this needs furniture if you wanted to to virtually stage it. So without using any virtual staging software whatsoever, just using free alternatives, then I got this result. And this is AI generated. We're gonna talk a little bit about this and some of the other stuff as well. But you can see that this isn't perfect as well. Notice down over here, this is all messed up. So if we go back to the original picture, we can see that that's what it should look like. So there are some big mistakes that are in here. When we go back and forth on these, we can see small minor mistakes and also, this is some very odd looking furniture that AI decided to pick out, but this is just the beginning. The same thing goes here. This was uh, an empty, uh, complete downstairs living area, dining area. So by doing some free alternatives here to virtually stage it, I got this option here. This is about the best I could do, but there are some things that are wrong and unacceptable for real estate. Notice over here that the window got extended and something is wrong here. If we go back and forth from the original to this, we can see that this is, shouldn't be here, this lower pane. It was based off of these reflections that were in the glass, so it did a fill. And this wasn't really accurate. Now, Interestingly enough, it got rid of some shadows that were down here. You can see here on the original, those went away when I did this option here. So a lot of this is just generated through AI like this. This was just a small office, but this isn't real. The original picture looked like this. So with the people were still moving out, uh, we wanted to get at least a decent view of the room that showed one selling feature of this bedroom with having these barn doors here. But you can see we needed to remove that. And how did that go out? Well, virtually staged instantly within just a few seconds, it turned into this, which isn't perfect. If you take a close look, there's a lot of imperfections that are going on here. What I delivered to the client though was this. Now this uses some more traditional methods that are much more accurate than what's going out there. There's a lot of hype about AI and what it's able to do for you. And I'm going to touch on that next, but I wanted to show here first to preface it that it, we're not there yet with AI to do all this. That's where some of that hinder stuff comes in. To help with this though, a little bit of AI was used, but stuff that's readily available right now in Photoshop and Lightroom Classic, not stuff that you're waiting for in a beta. And this, by the way, are techniques that I show in my expert editing course. If you're not familiar with my online courses on real estate photography, I have a link to that down in the description for this video. So doing it the traditional way here, I'm able to do easy item removal, by just taking out this other furniture that was in here. So that's fairly easy to do if you know the right techniques. If you leave it up to AI to do this, you're gonna get decisions like this to try to figure it out. And look down here, I don't know what that black line is, why that picked it up. I don't know why the desk has some weird thing hanging off of it over here. And it's not even the tabletop isn't even cohesive with the type of finish that's on it. The pens don't look real and the shadows are all over the place. I don't know why, if I go back and forth to the original, there's this big shadow that's here coming in. When we take a look at what I delivered, it's really not there because the window is 
behind me. So there's more light here than what there would be shadows. So having shadows in both directions here just doesn't make sense. But let alone, yeah, the furniture just isn't there. You can see more of the table legs also. Let's take a closer look at some of these other ones too. If you notice over here, when I said put in a dining room table, yeah, I put in a dining room table, but the chairs, they look very bizarre. And I tried multiple times to try to get this right. And I'm gonna jump into how this was done. There are other companies though that are coming out to do stuff like this. And I'm gonna to touch on that as well. So this is done using uh, what will be eventually in an upcoming release of Photoshop. It's in beta right now. It's gonna just be the Firefly uh, module that's been out there on the web for the longest time. And I'll leave a link to where you can do this uh, down in the description for the video as well. But this engine, even though it's just run on the web, will be in Photoshop. I don't like to run these beta versions that everybody else has been playing with on my production machines, just don't trust them because they're so buggy, but you can see the results here. For instance, what we'll do is we'll just upload an image. So from here, let's upload that car picture. So we'll open that up and there we have, there we have all the cars. Now, what I wanna do is I can either insert stuff or remove it. So let's just zoom in here a little bit, see what we're doing. And I'll just click remove. And then what I'll do is with a brush, I'm gonna then brush over all these cars. That's all I'm gonna do. Now, every result will be different, so we're not gonna get the exact same result that I had before. But once I get this brushed over and I'm pretty happy with the area that I want to have removed, all I have to do then is click Remove down here, and a few seconds later, there is our result. Now what it does then is it gives you some options. Here's one, we'll click on another one here. And that actually looks better than what I had before because now it's also putting the little planner boxes down here and I've got better looking street view down here. And then this might also work, that's pretty good. So I've got all these options or I could say keep giving me more options. So I've got a lot to choose from. And then once I like it, I can decide to keep it. And then with that then I can download the image. But let's take a look at if we were to do some virtual staging. So let's upload a different image. Let's upload that image of that blank living room here. We'll open that up and now I can say what I want to insert into here. So I'll use the uh, insert tool and I'll just brush over here to like add a couch. That'll be the first thing. So I'll go over here and I'm not gonna do the whole room but just show you an example of what you would do. You would select an area with this brush and eventually in Photoshop they'll have other tools to do this as well. Once you have that then, you can leave a description, typical of AI. And in here, we'll do something like, what do you want in here? We'll say a, an L-shaped couch, and we'll do a sectional actually, L-shaped uh, sectional sofa made of leather. And let's see what it comes up with. Click generate. And here are our results. So this actually looks pretty good, not too bad. It's even picking up some blue from what should be the outside sky. Looks a little fake, but there are other options. This makes no sense. I don't know what this is when I said couch. Also, this might be better. That's an L-shaped uh, sofa. And of course, then we've got this. You can see though, it is screwing up stuff in the background because it's trying to do this AI generative fill. It's not just dropping in furniture. For instance, you might be uh, familiar with other videos I've done on virtual staging, uh, taking an image like this and then using apply design, then I've got this. And this is where I can drag furniture around, put it where I need to, and I can do a lot more with it and enhance it too because I can keep the furniture separate from the image. Once again, I I started with this image on, apply, uh, on applydesign.io and using their tools, then I virtually staged it like this. And this doesn't cost much. It's about like $7 an image and you just do the work yourself and you can render it as many times as you need to. I've got also a link to the uh, video that I've got on my YouTube channel on how to take this to the next level, how to do this all down in the description for the video as well. But you can see doing it this way though with traditional virtual staging software, it's pretty easy for me to do, and the AI figured out pretty much where the shadows were supposed to be. Some of them were missing here, but you'll see in that other tutorial video, I show how to add those in and enhance other shadows, brighten other areas and do stuff like that as well. So this is something that I would still prefer, but the thing is, is AI, this generative AI is just getting started. And there's a lot of companies that are trying to get into this space 
For instance, virtual staging AI is one of them and you can upload a picture for free just to see what it would look like. And you can see, here's that picture of the living room. And if you recall what it looked like, when I let uh, Adobe Firefly, which will be the generative fill in Photoshop, when I did it that way, I got kind of a mess of things and things weren't quite accurate. Not everything looked realistic and it changed the background also in places on the photo. But using a service like virtual staging AI, you can see that it got a pretty good result out of it from what I had uploaded. So not that bad of a result actually coming out of here. And this was generated in just a few seconds by uploading the image. I didn't have the ability to drag things around. It automatically staged it. But see what's happening here? If a lot of real estate agents didn't want to pay for virtual staging, they could just use this app online and there's no work. They just upload it, it's virtually staged, then they can send it to the MLS. So what do we do about that? The short answer is you got to be better and you have to prove it. So using real virtual staging software, then you get this type of result that you can also enhance. This is going to be a much better result than anybody automatically could create because you can also select the style based off of what the client wants. You start with a blank room, you talk to the client while you're taking the photos or before, kind of what they're thinking, what they might want, make some suggestions just like a designer would, and then you design it yourself and you put those things in. You don't leave it up to some other software to do that for you. And you can also prove that this whole automatic AI thing, even like this with, within Photoshop, prove that you can do better because you can edit photos like this. With this photo, with those items removed, you could take this into applydesign.io and you could virtually stage anything you wanted there, bedrooms or whatnot. And you could place the furniture there and get more realistic results or just give them this blank image. This entire edit to do this, and like the stuff that I show in my uh, expert editing course, this only took about a minute to just do those edits, maybe two minutes for everything. It really doesn't take that long once you get used to doing it. And I didn't have to rely on AI. I was the one that was in charge. I was the one making a decision to say, what's the best way to take all this furniture out? Now, should I leave it to AI? Make a decision like this? And that was the best that could come out of it? Right now, I would say no. I would rather start with something blank and then virtually stage it myself. But when it comes to item removal, that can really help. These cars, that would have been so difficult to remove in traditional methods, where using this generative AI, it was able to fill that in, get a much better result out of it. So once again, I can prove that by doing this myself, then I can do better because I can take this and take it to the next level to finish off the editing. If I left this entirely just to AI, then I've got a lot of mistakes because AI will never be able to know the entire creative process of a photographer and a client, what they're looking for and what their goals are. No matter how much you could type in to AI to tell it what to do to help you out, it will never know exactly what to do. So while everybody is playing around with all this generative fill out of Photoshop, it's time to start taking it serious. It's time to start realizing that we're at the very cusp of a very big change that's going on. Sure, things are not perfect to where they should be, but they will be soon. Over time, this will continue to grow. If you stay on top of it, you stay good with your skills, know how to use tools then like this to your advantage, but their limitations, then you can start garnering more work. Make sure that you get that work from clients now so that you can always continue to have work from them in the future. But as these things change, we have to change with them. And I'll keep staying on top of it. And as new things come out and I see things that will help us in the real estate photography industry, I'll keep you posted.